This video tutorial is brought to you by Tipsquirrel.com, the home of all the best Photoshop and Lightroom tips on the web. Hi everybody, Mike Hoffman here, and in today's tip I'm going to show you a 3D technique. A few weeks ago I posted a time lapse of the creation of this image in 3D, and during the creation I ran across a few techniques that I want to share with you, and the first one that we're going to start with today is the creation of this field of spheres, or particle field, in space. If we go to the 3D layer, and we activate the Move tool, I can move this scene around, and you can see that all these globes are floating in 3D space. Now, I didn't have to create these individual globes one at a time. I was able to create them with a technique that I'm going to show you today. What we're going to do is start with a new document. So I'm going to choose File New, and we'll start a new document, 1280 by 720, and click OK. I'm going to set the colors to the default of black and white by pressing the D key, and then I'm going to choose the Brush Tool. With the Brush Tool selected, I'm actually going to open the Brushes panel by choosing Window, Brush, or pressing F5. And here I'm going to choose a 30 pixel hard round brush. And if we turn off all the effects, we can see this is the default brush shape. But we're going to modify this. We'll start with Shape Dynamics. And in the Shape Dynamics section, we're going to increase the size jitter. And this is going to vary the size as we brush. So I'm going to actually crank this all the way up to 100%. And this is going to create some extremely random fluctuations in the size of the brush tip. Then we'll go to Scattering. And I'm going to turn scattering up as high as it will go as well. And this will scatter the brush tip shapes around on the canvas as we draw. Now these are still overlapping each other, and I want them to actually be separate. So I'm going to go back to brush tip shape, and I'm going to increase the spacing by quite a bit to separate them from each other. So we'll run this up to about, oh, 300, 320% or so. And that looks pretty good. And maybe we'll increase the size just a little bit. 35, 36, that looks good. Now we'll go ahead and close the brushes panel for now and create a new blank layer on top of the background. On this new blank layer, again drawing with black color, I'm going to simply stroke across and you can see this is what's happening. I'll undo that and I'll make a swirly stroke and create a bunch more round circles. And that's pretty good. What we want is for the circles to be physically separate from each other without overlapping. Now remember, these are created on their own layer, and this is important because the next step we're going to do is create a 3D layer from this, and we're going to do that by choosing 3D, New 3D Extrusion from Selected Layer. Photoshop will ask us if we want to switch to the 3D workspace, and we'll say yes. And here we are, and here's our extrusion. So we can see the circles have all been extruded out basically into cylinders. So we'll go back to the default view, and this is what we have. Now this doesn't exactly resemble a 3D field of floating globes. So we're going to have to make some changes to this. We'll go ahead and spin it around a little bit so you can see what's happening. And then I'm going to go to the 3D panel. And here in the 3D panel, I'm going to choose layer 1, which is my extrusion. Now I'm going to change the extrusion depth, and you can see as I drag this slider, we make the cylinders longer or shorter, and we actually want to take them down to zero. We want them to be completely flat. So if I click over here, now we can see that we've got a completely flat set of extruded circles. They're not extruded at all, but what we can do now is to once again choose that layer here in the 3D panel and come up to the Properties panel and we'll go to the Cap Controls. We'll make sure that we're set to adjust both front and back and then we're going to go down to the Inflation section. We're going to change the inflation angle from its default of 45 all the way up to 90. Now You can't see anything yet until we start increasing the strength. Once we start increasing the strength, you'll see that the circles are inflating and becoming spheres. Now I've played around with this a little bit, and I found that 
a strength in the low 20s seems to work pretty well to simulate globes. And sure enough, there are our globes floating in 3D space. There are quite a few of them. They're all black, but we need more and we want to give them some color, but not necessarily in that order. Let's go ahead and start with the color. And I'm going to click on the front inflation material. And this is the texture that we inflated when we were adjusting the cap. With the front inflation material selected, I'm going to go up here to the diffuse texture. And I'm going to click this icon and I'm going to choose edit texture. Notice the information here that this layer is included in multiple places. As we're going to see, this also is the back inflation material, and that's going to help us out. We'll click OK, and here is our texture, and it's just the same black circles. What we'll do is we'll go to the Layers panel, and we'll create a new layer. On the new layer, we're going to draw a gradient. So I'm going to choose my Gradient tool, and here in the Gradient tool dropdown, I'm going to choose this gear icon, and I'm going to load the gradient set called Spectrums. I'll click OK, and I'll choose the first one here. Now at this point, I'm going to simply draw from left to right and create something about like that. That looks pretty good. What I'm going to do is clip this to the circles. I'm going to place my cursor in between the two layers, and then I'm going to hold down my Alt or Option key and click. And that will cause this layer to appear only where there are pixels on the layer below. So now we can see we've got a rainbow of circles. So we'll go ahead and save this, and we'll close this and go back to our 3D object, and here we are. I'll choose the Move tool once again, click out here in the scene, and we can drag around and we can see that we've got the same texture on the front and back sides. So that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and go back to the default view for now. And then we'll go over to the Layers panel. Here's our 3D layer. And I'm going to duplicate this two times by pressing Control-J on Windows or Command-J on a Mac. And we can see now that we have a total of three copies, the original plus two copies. And I'm going to highlight all three of these in the Layers panel. And then I'm going to go to the 3D menu and choose Merge 3D Layers. Now we've got them all merged together on one layer, and we can go back to the 3D panel. And we can see here that the three layers have now become three meshes. We can click on any one of these meshes, and we can drag it around, and it will separate from the others, as you can see here. So that's pretty good. We'll click on the very last one here, and we'll drag this one around, and we'll flip it the other way. And now we've suddenly got a tremendous number of these floating globes, and they're in all different attitudes and all different locations. We'll select a view once again, and now we can see we've got quite a few spheres. We'll go back to the default view, and remember that we flipped one over, so we've got mixed colors, but the one that we flipped over, which is this one, we can change the colors to match the others. This was the third one we created, and the easiest way I found to get to this is to go back to the Layers panel and expand this and look at the textures. Here's the third texture that we created, and we can simply double-click this to edit it. We'll click OK, and here is the texture. What we're going to do is flip this gradient around in the other direction. So I'm going to highlight this, and I'm going to choose Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal. That's it. I'll save this, close it, and we'll go back to the 3D file. And now we've got all the greens on the left, all the blues on the right, and it's a little bit more uniform. We've created our field of floating spheres now in 3D. We can drag this around to whatever position we want. And then it's a simple matter to come in here, grab a background texture, put it in our file. And now we've got a nice creation. There are quite a few possibilities with this, and I hope this opens up some creative doors from you as you're working with 3D in Photoshop. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of Photoshop, Lightroom, and photography tips and tricks there. 
You can follow me on Twitter at mhoffman2001, and you can find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's tip.